streaming in on a football Friday here on Birds 365. Jody Mac with Tone to Shield. Hopping in for Johnny Mac, who's off to uh, catch the coach's Friday press availability. Um, so Tone will be sitting in for the uh, next hour. Coming up in oh, about 20 minutes from now, uh, Zach Pearson from BearsReport.com. I never had the pleasure of talking to uh, Zach, uh, but Johnny Mac got him to agree to come on the show last night. And you told us, Tone, before the show, he was on uh, with Ricky Saratella earlier this week. Yes, sir. Yeah, he did a really good job, man. Gave us a lot of insight on the Chicago Bears. And um, I mean, the Chicago Bears are a team that don't really have too much to write home about. But again, it's a team that you don't want to slip up against. You don't want that loss on your resume if I'm the Philadelphia Eagles. Understood. And yeah, it doesn't matter who they're playing. The the Eagles are looking to uh, just pile up the wins until they get to the point where they've locked home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Um, they, you you haven't, then for those who don't know, uh, Don is our producer. Uh, we shoot the breeze with him for just a couple minutes before the show starts. When the show's over and done with, he's got to go to Sarah Teller's show, so we don't get to shoot the breeze with Tone as much as we used to. They keep him so busy producing shows here. Uh, haven't gotten your take yet on the fact that the Bears are not good. They're 3-10, they're and 10 and they are 3-10 and 10 by merit. They didn't even hide the fact that they're not worried about wins this year. It's one thing to trade Khalil Mack before the season starts and get the draft picks and try and uh, change the look of your team before the season even gets underway. But they trade Roquan Smith in season, their best defensive player. Before the year started, they traded their best defensive player. So Roquan Smith gets elevated to their best defensive player, and they turn around and trade him as well. This is not a good football team the Eagles are playing this week, Tom. No, not at all. And uh, you brought up Roquan Smith and Khalil Mack. And I know Robert Quinn hasn't really had the year that we all would prefer. But, you know, they traded away their top three defensive assets. And if that's not a team that's rebuilding, I don't know what is. You know, they've they've accumulated some assets, you know, in return. They've got some picks in return for those guys. They freed up a lot of cap space. They're going to have a lot of money to spend. So I'm really curious to see how they look next year. They're clearly rebuilding. They're not shy about that. They have a 3-10 and 10 record. And I just have a hard time believing that this team will be able to even sniff the Philadelphia Eagles jockstrap. I just don't I, I, I just don't think they're even in the same – on the same planet. They're, they're not even breathing the same air, Jody. <laughs> yeah, that's why the Eagles are a nine-point favorite coming in. And basically, they pinned all their hopes and dreams going forward – on a young quarterback who I happen to be a big fan of. Um, I didn't even know he was going to be as good a runner as he's turned out to be. I used to take off every once in a while and, and make plays with his legs at Ohio State, but not like he has done this year for the Chicago Bears. And they're asking him to carry the whole load, specifically on offense. Uh, Mooney, their best receiver, is on IR for the year. Claypool, the guy who I liked as an addition. They traded second round pick to get him. Some people thought it was an overpayment. I didn't. He hasn't exactly kicked in yet in Chicago, and he's missed the last two days of practice. Who the hell's going to make any offensive plays for the Bears this week? Justin Fields. <laughs> you know, they they have essentially nobody. Like How many he, times is he going to run it? 25? He's going to he's going to literally become a running back this Sunday. I'm telling you that right now. And you know, I'm really curious to see how the Philadelphia Eagles deal with that. Um, you know, the closest they've dealt with that throughout the season is probably Kyler Murray and Daniel Jones. We know we know the Giants love to scheme Daniel Jones uh running lanes and the Eagles did a pretty good job containing him. He containing him. He really didn't get off that much um uh, running the ball and um, I, I would anticipate or I would like to anticipate, right, that the Philadelphia Eagles would be able to limit Justin Fields. But Justin Fields is by far the best runner or the best athlete they may see at the quarterback position this season. And, you know, he's approaching a thousand yards rushing and there's still four games left to, left to be played in this season. I think he has about nine, 920, 930, something like that. He's he's pretty damn close to a thousand rushing yards and he is the offense, you know, being in Chicago. He's been forced to grow up really fast. You know, they placed a lot on his shoulders early. And some some would argue Chicago is where quarterbacks go to die. You know, who, where, where has Chicago developed a quarterback? The, the best quarterback in Chicago history that I've seen in my lifetime, right, is the guy that got them to the Super Bowl was Rex Grossman. I don't can't maybe Jake Cutler. I don't know. It's just they've they, they, they've struggled. 
McMahon before your time? Say that one more time. Jim McMahon before your time? I was born in 94, so. Uh, yeah, you know Jim McMahon. And oh, by the way, Jim McMahon, very famous quarterback, a lot of personality, um, but he really wasn't all that good a quarterback. The Super Bowl on the back of their defense, and McMahon didn't screw it up, and they handed it off to Walter Payton. So uh, for those of you like Toad who are a little bit younger, yes, Jim McMahon is certainly the most recognizable of the Bears quarterbacks over the last 30. What do you think it is, though, Jody? Like, like, why do you think it's so hard for Chicago to find a quarterback? It seems that like they're allergic to it. It's a very fair question. Um, it's got to be more than than just coincidence. But there's some coincidence involved because they they've changed coaches. They've changed general managers. They've changed presidents. The weather is a lake effect. Is that what you're telling me? That it, they just can't do it because the windy city, you can't throw the football. Uh, I think it's just been a series of inept individuals running the franchise more than anything else. Yeah, you, you may be right about that. But, you know, I think about Buffalo. Buffalo is not an easy place to throw the ball. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's just it's just it's just so hard. to. I've never seen an organization struggle so much at figuring out a position you know i mean you i mean some organizations fall into a quarterback you know what i mean but i hope i pray because i like justin fields and i think he's extremely talented i think he's probably one of the more talented quarterbacks out of his draft class and i hope they don't ruin this young man's career i hope they don't ruin his long-term health or his long-term sustainability because they are running him into the dirt and one thing i will say though i am pleased with the coaching staff beginning to lean into what he does well and beginning to build the offensive identity around him. I felt like his first year and part of this season, they sort of tried to force that square peg into a round hole, kind of turn him into a five-step, you know, seven-step drop back quarterback. When in reality, you have to get him in open space, you know, cut the field in half, you know, do what you can to maximize his ability. Kind of similar to what the, um, what the Eagles did with Jalen Hurts last season for the second part of the season. And, oh, by the way, some people would suggest that the Eagles fell into Jalen Hurts. I would not be one of them because I like the pick when they made it. Few and far between people go, yeah, you know, that's a worthwhile second-round pick because now here's where the honesty comes in. They could have an expense, an inexpensive backup for four years. Little did I know that by year three, he'd be competing for the MVP. <laughs> I didn't say that, but I did say I thought it was a smart pick by the Eagles the night that they took him in the second round. So, yes, and it all has to do with expectations. The expectations, even as a second, there's a big difference between being middle of the second round and the 11th pick in the draft like Justin Fields was. So, yeah, there are much more higher expectations for a guy like Justin Fields. And at least in one aspect, he's answered the call for him this year, becoming the top running quarterback in the National Football League. Uh, but as we talked about on the other side of the ball with the Bears, th they've given up their best defensive players. Uh, you even put Quinn into the mix, who you're right, year before at 18 and a half sacks. Now, when they traded him, he wasn't playing all that well for them. We know since he's gotten here to Philadelphia, he hasn't really done too much for the Eagles and now on injured reserve. But uh, that, that's got to be something heavy to weigh on. A young man like Fields, he's got to carry the weight of not only the offense, but basically the defense as well. How do you think the Eagles attack this undermanned Bears defense on Sunday? They have options. They have their pick of the litter. Let's be frank about it. Their pass defense is nothing to write home about. Their run defense is nothing to write home about. Their pass rush is nothing to write home about. I think they're bottom of the barrel. Other than that, how do you like the play, Mrs. Lincoln? In other words, <laughs> they stink, they stink, and they stink. <laughs> You know, I, I try to give these guys credit because they are pro athletes and I always like their approach it from the perspective of from the perspective of they're doing something that I have no business doing. And that's playing NFL level football. So I try to I try to give these guys, you know, the slightest bit of respecting and, you know, and credence. But, man, I, I've, I've watched some Bears games and it just seems like quarterbacks are able to knit sweaters back there, make some tea, you know, tuck the kids in, you know, make a baby bottle. They can do whatever they want in that pocket. And. That's that's really the biggest problem. And also they're without their star safety and uh, Eddie um, Jackson, Eddie Jackson. Thank you, Eddie Jackson. So, man, they're limited. Um, they're depleted. And on top of that, it just seems like they lack talent on the defensive lines. Only 16 sacks on a season. That's basically an average of one sack per game, maybe actually less than that because there's 17 games in the season. 
They uh, right now are struggling in all facets of the game, and the Bears are the Eagles are catching the Bears at the right time. And you know, Tom, because you were here uh, the first three, four days of the week, I was worried about this game just from a purely trap game aspect. They're coming off not only a a key rivalry game against the Giants, but one that turned into a blowout. They've got the Cowboys coming up in just six days thereafter, a Christmas Eve day game, a Saturday game, rather than Sunday game. So a shortened week, not a terribly short, not Thursday night, but one less day to prepare and get ready. And everybody's thinking about the holidays and everything else. That maybe they should, yeah, I got to be ready for the Cowboys. Let me get my Christmas shopping done this week. This had trap written all over it. Lesser opponent coming off a rivalry game, heading toward a huge rivalry game. The only team that really can do anything to knock the Eagles uh, season off the tracks even a little bit. But as I did my homework and and broke down the numbers and, and watched the tape that I needed to watch, the Bears just don't have it. There's not a, a, a path to the Bears being competitive in this game. And it was all about, for me, the Eagles – not being completely in the moment and and maybe taking the Bears a little bit too lightly. I guess we should all thank Michael Parsons because, yeah, he kind of got everybody back on track and everybody focused. Bears, 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 Bears. They're not going to stub their toe against the Bears here this week, are they? I don't anticipate that. And you bring up that, that that's a funny way of looking at it, right? Michael Parsons kind of did us a favor getting us refocused on the task at hand. That's a, that's an interesting way of looking at it. Looking at it. I didn't think about it from the perspective. Um, but you know, for me, it goes back to the quarterback position for the Philadelphia Eagles. I always say, and I've learned this by, you know, watching the game, and I've learned this by listening to guys like you, John McMullen, you know, Rob Ellis, um, Derek Gunn, Bear Brooks, Seth Jordan. I've learned this from you guys, and that's the fact that. Teams take on the identity of their coaches and also take on the identity of their starting quarterback. And Jalen Hurts has shown that he is not the type to look too far ahead. He's not the type to look too far back in um in the rearview mirror. Jalen Hurts is someone who stays in the moment. He stays in the grind. And he doesn't allow outside external forces to dictate how he plays football. Now, granted, he's human. I'm sure he hears everything. He hears everything. He hears everything. He know he knows everything going on around him, around this league. And he said something in one of his press conferences that really stood out to me. He said, I carry my scars everywhere I go. And that speaks to, to me, that speaks to him knowing all the doubters and knowing everything they've said about him and still elevating above what people have deemed him to be. So this team is led by the right guy. You know, I've, I've never felt this comfortable as a supporter of the Eagles, I've never felt this comfortable as a fan with within the quarterback position from a mental perspective. Maybe Nick Foles because he's such a cool customer, but I've never felt this comfortable from a leadership standpoint. And I think it goes a long way. And this, and this team will go as far as he takes them. And he's got uh, other guys like uh Kelsey to be able to uh, share that leadership with, but I'm with you. I don't think he, if they didn't have as good a, a a Hall of Fame center and a leader as Jason Kelsey, I still think the Eagles would be in very good shape because of the the quarterback that they have. Uh, Hertz, Hertz really does command the respect of his teammates, even in his still relatively young. And I think from time to time, we underemphasize that. Last year was his first year as a starting quarterback. So he's in his second year as a starting quarterback, third year in the league, year one being a year that, no one thought he was going to play. Nobody saw Carson Wentz basically going in the crapper. Um, so for him, and uh, we keep talking about the fact that he came into the NFL at a young age, year younger than most quarterbacks do. Um, yeah, his his ability to take a hold of a locker room is, is unparalleled, certainly here in Philadelphia with what we've seen. All right, so yeah, if the Eagles can handle the Bears, and we're going to get our uh, Bears reporter, Zach Pearson, up here in just a couple of minutes. Are the Jaguars going to do the Eagles the biggest favor? Is Dougie P going to lend a major helping hand to his former team and pick off the Cowboys this week? You know, it's funny you say that because I think that was one of the biggest reasons why I had a problem 
with what Michael Parsons said, you know, I've been hearing you and uh, John, you guys aren't really buying into it. Right. And um, for me, the biggest, my biggest issue was the fact that, Hey, you're looking a little too far ahead, my man. You still have one more hurdle to jump over before you get to us. Focus on your plate. My mom always told me, young man, you're not touching these honey buns. You're not touching these cookies until you finish that spaghetti on your plate. You're not, fin- you're not, you're not touching none of these goodies until you finish dinner. So, I, you know, I approach it from that mindset. Focus on what's in front of you. And I wouldn't put it past the Dallas Cowboys to drop one on the road in Jacksonville. Trevor Lawrence is starting to find his groove. He's starting to find Correct. his swing. He was he was just Offensive Player of the Week uh, this past week. So that's something you have to pay attention to. And the Dallas Cowboys have shown to play down in competition. They've shown that they've had chinks in the armor. That Houston Texans game, I don't think it's being talked about enough. They went down to the brink, the brink, at least when the Philadelphia Eagles played them. They got, they got a handle of the game in the second half. Right. They went down to the final minute, the final 10, 15 seconds of that game. They had to go on a, what, a 90 yard, 80 yard drive, I guess, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure. Which, what the to their credit, was, they did. They had to go. And they did. And they did it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they did it. And I give them absolute credit. That's respect. But it's the Houston Texans. And you couldn't register a sack on their quarterback. Not one bit. Where was Micah then? So I think yeah. Micah needs to focus on the Jacksonville Jaguars because they're going up against a better quarterback in Trevor Lawrence and better players at the skill position. And, oh, by the way, uh, Jacksonville, the uh, Jaguars mascot, might be out there in his Speedo doing some twerking at uh, uh, Michael Parsons, <laughs> which should be interesting to see if uh, Micah notices him uh, the same way he notices the MVP status of Jalen Hurts. All right, uh, Tony Shields in for John McMullen. J-Mac had to take out, take off early. The uh, coach is having a media session, which they gather some pretty good information for the upcoming game. Uh, so Johnny Mac gets out early on Friday. Stone to Shields jumping into his spot. Coming up next, we hope to hear from Zach Pearson, who was the Bears reporter for BearReport.com. He was on the channel earlier this week. Uh, Tone said he did a good job. Hopefully he does so for us again. Next, Zach Pearson will join us here on Birds 365.